All right, a translation. Back in middle school, you called a reflection a flip. A translation you called a slide. No? Oh. Oh, you didn't get eighth grade math, some of you. Yeah. Yeah. So a translation is a slide. You just slide something so many um, units one way and so many units another way. Okay. So a translation is a transformation in a plane that maps all the points of a pre image the same distance in the same direction. Okay. So this one, we're mapping the black onto the red. So how far in the x direction does a go to get to a prime? In the x direction, how far does a go to get to a prime? Well, it goes one, two, three, four in the x direction. And it goes one, two, three, four, five, six in the y direction. So we use a capital T for translation, just like we used a capital R, and I am not writing on this, am I? Okay, there we go. We use a capital T for translation, just like we used a capital R for reflection. So the translation, we go a negative four in the x direction, and a negative six in the y direction with every point. Because if A goes negative four, negative six, then B goes one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. C goes one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six. They all go four to the left and six down to get from one to the other. Four to the left and six down. Nate, you can copy the vocab word from Haley. All right, so what is T7 negative four do? It moves at seven which direction? To the right and four which way? Down. So if we start with F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right. One, two, three, four down. F prime is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. G prime is here. E prime. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. E prime. It makes a triangle that slid seven to the right and four down. I think translations are the easiest of the, the transformations. What? Yeah. A translation is a slide. They're the same thing. Just like a reflection is a flip. And rotation is a turn. Okay. All right. So what's the translation for this one from black to red? From black to red. One to the left is what? Negative one. How far did we go down? Four. So it's negative four. That's the translation rule. Okay, that's the translation rule when you say how far it went. What's the translation rule for C to A? For C to A, dot C to dot A. One, two, one to the right, two up. C to A. What about E to G? Four, negative one, four to the right, one down, E to G, okay? So, we are also going to work on compositions of rigid motions in this section, which means there's more than one going on at a time in a problem. 
A transformation with two or more rigid motions in which a second is performed on the image of the first rigid motion. So unlike reading English in math, when we have compositions of transformations, we do the right one first, and then we do the left one. We do the right one first, and then we do the left one. It's backwards from normal reading. So a composition of rigid motions is a transformation with two or more rigid motions in which a second one is performed on the image of the first one. So in this one, we're going to translate it negative 2, 5 first, and then we're going to reflect it across the line L. Okay, so what they did here is in this translation of negative 3, 4 and negative 1, 2, you do this one first. So you go back 1, down 2 for to get from A to B, and then you go back 3 and up 4 to get to C. Okay. So that's a composition of transformations. You do the right one first, and then you do the left one. So you learn how to dance, okay? Some country line dance, something or another. So how do you get from A to B? You go one, two to the right, and one, Two up. So it's two, two. That's a translation of two, two. And then it is composed with, now you got to get to C. How do you get to C? Right one, down one. So it's a translation of one, negative one. You do this one, then you do that one. You work from right to left on this. All right. Theorem 3, 1. Okay. You'll have a couple questions on this, and these are the what people were confused about in the first period. Okay. If you reflect across a line twice, then it's really a slide because when you reflect, and I reflect again, and if the lines are parallel, I should say, if you reflect across parallel lines, what happens is the image is back to what it originally was. So it's just like you slid it over. The distance between the two parallel lines, you take times two to find the distance of the translation. So if the distance between the parallel lines is four, and you have something over here and it ends up over here, then you translate it eight, zero. Okay, because you're not going up or down with it, you're going straight across. So then it would be a translation of eight, zero. Okay, now if you start like here and then you go across this line and then you go across this line, it's going to wind up to be still however far this is. So let's say you go three to the right. And then, that, well, if this is at x equals three and this is at x equals negative two, how far apart are three and negative two? Five. So if you go this way and then that way, what you're really doing is translating 10 to the left. Okay. Because these are five apart, so once you go across this way, then you go back this way, you're actually from the original spot, you're going 10 to the left.
Okay, so it's just a slide and you write it in this fashion. And if there's two lines, you go twice the distance between the two parallel lines, okay? So that's what we're doing. So when we put two translations together, when we put two translations together like we did here, you can just add them together if it's two translations. Negative one and negative three make negative four. Negative two and four make a positive two, okay? So your assignment is out there on your computers. Nate, I've got yours. Yes. We do. Don't scare him. Three, two. You're doing three, two first. Don't do three, three yet. We haven't talked about that. What? Yeah, we're doing another one today.